It just hit five. Alrighty, hello everybody. Today we are going to be talking about bloodborne pathogens and COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus. Um, so I'm going to do my first little spiel here on bloodborne pathogens, and then Alan will come up and talk a bit about uh, prairie and the coronavirus and all that good stuff. Um, so bloodborne pathogens, these are infectious microorganisms in human blood that can cause disease in humans. These include HBV or hepatitis B, HCV or hepatitis C, and human immunodeficiency virus HIV. So HBV is a liver infection. It's the most common and serious liver infection. Uh, it can remain infectious for up to seven days, and there's no notice noticeable symptoms at first. Uh, if symptoms do develop, they include fever, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting, jaundice, and bloated stomach. Um, it also produces liver failure. HCV is also another type of liver infection. Um, will show no symptoms at all, but if they do get some symptoms, they include fever, lack of energy, nausea and vomiting, jaundice, and stomach pain as well. Um, this specific one can cause uh, symptoms like decades after the initial infection, um, so you can have actually liver infection decades after you actually had HCV. HIV um, it affects, it affects the immune system and is spread through bodily fluids or unprotected sex. It's flu-like flu -like symptoms, including fatigue, weight loss, fevers, and sweats, and short-term memory loss. And this leads to acquired immunodeficiency virus, or AIDS. So those are the three main types of bloodborne pathogens. Um, in the workplace, there are three million uh, occupational injuries in the workplace a year. So basically all that's saying is it means it's very likely that you will eventually give first aid to a coworker at some point in time. Um, you can also get these, be exposed to these through ingestion, through contaminated foods, sexual contact, uh, direct blood to blood <coughs> contact. So if you have an open wound and it touches another wound, that's why we want to make sure we're getting everything wrapped up. Um, dirty needles. I hope we don't have a problem with that. We're not in any like uh, facility or that's not our industry, you know, so we shouldn't have that problem. And contact with mucous membranes and open cuts and sores. So that includes your mouth, your nose, your eyes, things like that. Protecting yourself, um, this kind of goes for coronavirus as well. Uh, universal precautions. Treat all blood, bodily fluids, and other objects as if they are infected, regardless if they are or not. So, especially if you don't know, treat it as if it's infected, wear gloves, wear a mask. Um, engineering controls, these don't really apply to the work we do here, um, but engineering controls that other facilities, like medical facilities, use are sharps containers and things like that. Administrative controls, um, proper housekeeping, sanitation, wipe down surfaces, wash your hands, sneeze into uh, your sleeves, tissues, things like that. Um, you can get an HPV vaccine um, and PPE. We talk about PPE a lot. Uh, it is your last line of defense. I don't know how many times I say that. We have all these different controls before that gets down to that point. Once all those other controls fail, that PPE is your last line between you and the hazard. Um, those can include latex gloves, your safety glasses you guys wear, face shields, protective clothing, and ventilation barriers. If you contact um, bloodborne pathogens, or like Alan will talk about later, you immediately wash the exposed area and report and get medical evaluation immediately. All right, Alan. You're up. Yep. Oh. Do I change these slides? With the arrow. This? Well, no, you just the keys on the keyboard. Oh, okay, yep. got it. So I just want to talk a little bit about the coronavirus. Obviously, it's impacting the whole country and the world, really. A little bit of good news is I see that where it started, whether China and some of these heavily infected areas like South Korea, I noticed they say that they're actually starting to make improvements. So I guess it's an indicator maybe this uh, there'll be an end in sight someday here. But <clears throat> obviously it's impacting a lot of things, uh, whether it's the coronavirus or the reaction to the coronavirus. But 
Prairie is taking it serious. Uh, we are not planning on shutting down. We're not in a industry that, you know, we have large crowds or anything like that where this, this is going to spread rapidly. But we do want to take some precautions. So um, currently here, we've got the slide up there. So Prairie has an action plan in place. So that's the biggest thing I want you guys to know. And um, it'll be implemented if we get to that point. So we have a we have a written plan with roles and responsibilities for everybody, and going as far as if if certain people were out, who would take their place and fill their role and things like that. <clears throat> um, for the most part, we just want to make sure that we're being safe and trying to uh, prevent people from getting infected. Uh, if the plan is put in place, you will be notified by a supervisor. So you can read the slide here for yourself, but just some points on coronavirus. Uh, it's real, but it's not the end of the world. In most cases, 80% of the people who have it or will contract it will experience mild symptoms. Uh, virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. So it's not necessarily in the air. Uh, does not appear to be an airborne pathogen. Make sure to wash your hands frequently and keep a safe distance. Uh, six feet from coworkers whenever possible. This was one of the things that I was just at a conference in Omaha. There was a ton of people in the room and, you know, every time someone introduced somebody, they kind of elbow bumped or or whatever. But the best thing we can do is just keep distance, um, you know, breathing, coughing. I'll kind of get into some of this stuff. I'm, I'm going to keep it real simple, though. I think there's been enough on the news, but I don't want to make any assumptions that everybody's following this. So characteristics of the virus, uh, like I said, it's spread through droplets, not airborne. Effective immediately wiping down common surfaces in trucks and shared spaces will be part of a pre and post trip. So basically, if you just wipe down steering wheel, any levers, handles, things that other another driver might have touched, you know, just wipe it down quick. The shop will provide wipes or else we have rags with a, a bleach mixture that disinfects and kills germs. Um, so stop by the shop if you need the wipes. Use common hygiene practices, including coughing into a tissue or your arm, washing your hands. So if you're coughing or sneezing, do everything you can to cover it up and not let that go into the air, especially if anybody's around you. Uh, if the plan is activated, uh, anyone reporting for work will wear a protective mask as part of the plan. So that applies to the office and the shop, anyone in the building. Um, so as you go out in the, the trucks, if we put this plan into effect, um, that's, you know, we'll wear a protective mask, but that, that's more to protect other people. You know, I mean, it's not what you're breathing in. It's so nothing is escaping. So, again, like I said, we plan to keep operating and we'll provide a copy of this plan to our producers if they need it. Um, just to show some of these people want assurance that we're going to keep running and operating and moving the oil. So unless the government shuts us down, we plan to keep running. Um, office staff and dispatch will be equipped to work remotely as the rest of the day-to-day -day operations continue as usual. So if we have to, we're prepared for people um, to work from home, even dispatch if they had to work from home, um, we'll be prepared to do it. Um, you, I can't really stress this enough, but the wipe down common surfaces, that's how germs are spread. It's, it's not necessarily through the air. So um, anything you can do to prevent it, um, you know, we're not in a business where there's a ton of contact out there, but I know that pumpers and stuff. And for me, the one, the last bit of, I'll say to you is if you're not petrified of this, at least respect that some other people may be. So um, it's like shaking hands, you know, at the conference, I wasn't shaking hands. Um, and for the most part, a lot of people didn't want to. They were keeping the six foot. Um, 
right now we have a plan in place. That plan isn't implemented at this time, so it's not not everything is in effect. But obviously, we want to. There's enough going on that we know we need to be cautious. So you should be wiping everything down pre and post trip, and everyone in dispatch. You know, I've noticed everybody's wiping stuff down regularly. Definitely wash your hands, wash your face, that kind of stuff. Um, the question is, will I be paid if I get quarantined or have to stay home? That is actually a discussion that we're having. And um, I don't want to say yet because we haven't decided on it, but obviously we are um, cognizant of, of if that happens that you're going to be limited on what you can do. It'll be out of your control. Um, so, and with that said, you know, it's a good question. I want to stress if, if anybody's sick or feels sick, Make sure you communicate that to a supervisor. We don't want you coming in. Um, we will have a plan in place. This is something I just talked with Kim about it a little while ago. I've talked with the corporate office about it. Um, so you have you have PTO for these kind of things, but I think people are worried about extended illness and things like that. So I'll, I'll address that and put it in the plan, and, and I'll get something out on that. I just don't want to say without talking to the corporate office and Kim and making sure we're all on the same page. But we, we are aware of that. It's a good question. So um, with that in mind, um, if you feel sick, I really hope nobody abuses this, but I don't think supervision is going to be arguing with you. We'll, we'll encourage you to stay home if you're sick. Uh, we don't want to take any chances, get tested, and you know do everything that you can do to prevent the spread of this and obviously you're not going to want to infect your other friends and family so you know use caution we'll do everything we can to to get this checked out i think i said it that our insurance will cover coronavirus testing so this any other safety still set the deal where they're not testing everybody either you still have to go out through a fill out the little application to see if you got the right symptoms to be tested they haven't implemented the testing everybody yet I'm, I didn't get all that. They're, they have not implemented the testing everybody and anybody yet. You can only get tested if you show certain symptoms right, at right. this point. Yeah, so, yeah. So just so everybody's aware of that. Right. And that, that was Chad just saying you, you can't just go in and get tested if you want to. You have to show signs and symptoms. And that is, I believe... From what I know, that's just because of the number of test kits yeah. they have and things like yeah, that. But no, it, right. it's expanding rapidly, and I know some states have literally like quadrupled their testing overnight. So um, they're getting to it. Turn it over to you. Just a safety focus word that I forgot to put on the slide. Uh, sanitize yourselves. Oh, yeah, that's from last week. Oh. And I okay. forgot to cover it in the highlight. So... <laughs> I appreciate everybody's time and listening. Be safe. Um, try to use all the precautions you can, and we'll keep you posted. Thank you. Adios.